Hello YouTube and welcome to my castle. This is Medieval Engineers and what the math. In this video we're going to be taking a look at trebuchets or basically how to build one in this game and what it's all about and also a little bit of history behind the awesome destructive power of a trebuchet. I'm trying to actually lift this bridge but for some reason it's not working. I think I broke it by accident. Um, Alright, so this is, I actually didn't build this castle, this is a pre-made castle in the game, and I believe there's a barbarian that was trying to chase me, because this game now has a barbarians and other evil, uh, evil doers that try to kill you, so we have to be careful. We're going to go ahead and start building our trebuchet, and um, I'm going to start talking a little bit about the actual, um, the device itself and the history behind it. So, interestingly, um, trebuchets were actually only used for about two to three hundred years in, in history of warfare. And uh, I'm talking about specifically the trebuchet that we actually know um, and always think of when... Oh, hi, how are you? When we all... Huh? What do you want? What do you want, huh? You want a rock? You want a rock? Come here. Come here, buddy. Yeah! Um, the trebuchets that we usually think of historically are the ones that have counterweight... Oh, oh, I hit him in the butt. Oh no, oh no, I'm sorry. I feel bad now. Uh, the ones that have a counterweight, and this is the one we'll be making today. Now, historically though, um, obviously the Chinese invented it first. Uh, it's, it's actually known that Chinese had it for thousands of years before the Europeans, but they had a trebuchet that was actually operated by human power. I'm gonna show you what I mean by this when I start building it. Let's actually start with the beam, and this will be a very, very simple trebuchet that can actually be operated uh, very easily by almost anyone. So, I'm just, I just need a very high beam, and I'm going to explain why it needs to be high. Uh, but basically, um, the oh, another barbarian here. Uh, the, basically, the idea is that you would have a, a beam that would support the weight. Oh, no, no, you didn't. Oh, you jerk. You jerk! Take that. He totally just destroyed my... Tr I didn't even build it yet! Okay, I should have added barbarians. Anyway, I'm, we're gonna have to... Uh, we're gonna have to watch out for them. Um, anyway, moving on. So, as I was saying, you want to start with the beam and then you want to attach um, one of these things, also known as catch blocks, um, somewhere on the side. So, let's just say I think this is a pretty good... Yeah, this is a pretty good area to attach it, so let's just put it right here. Then, another beam is going to be basically rotating around it. Doesn't have to be this long, in this fashion right here. And, um, just to make it a little bit more balanced so it doesn't break, I'm gonna put one more here, but this is actually not even necessary, so... Uh, it doesn't wanna... Okay, anyway, so this is actually enough. And basically what you want to do now is to... Uh, you want to create the actual... Um, the actual fulcrum, so basically the actual lever, and this is what we're going to do here. Okay, so this is basically the skeleton of my trebuchet, and let me just explain to you what uh, it historically used to happen here and how it used to be used by the Chinese and some of the other um, cultures before the stereotypical trebuchet that we know today. Basically, this is actually a movable part, so right here, if I push it, it starts swinging around. Now, to the shore end right there, they would attach a rope that would go all the way down here and to this end right here they would attach some kind of an object that would be swung uh, and basically would fly when the other side would move downwards. So basically what would happen is you would have a bunch of people, specifically um, really strong people, holding a rope that would be attached right here. And here is just a very simple example of that. So basically I'm gonna attach a rope right here and right there. There you go. So, this rope would be held by a bunch of really strong guys that would actually, at the same time, pull it really, really hard. So, whatever was attached to this end, and specifically, there would be actually another rope uh, that would also have a rock attached to it. So, on, on this end, there would be actually a rock. Let's attach the thingy to it. Oh, no, no, no. Stop rolling. Stop rolling. Stop rolling. There you go. Stop it. Stop it! Uh, rocks. Rocks on gravity, what can you do? 
Okay, there we go. So this is just a simple example. And basically, this would be some sort of a thing that would be held by a rope that would then be swung by a really strong man. And this whole beam would then move upwards and throw this rock into the air. And it would actually fly uh, just in a similar way that you have like a, a sling or something. So it would be actually, uh, this would be people driven or people powered. So this was useful like thousands of years in China. There's actually pictures of Chinese ships that used to have this type of trebuchet. And this was actually called a traction trebuchet because it kind of used a traction device. Uh, and there will be like up to like 45 men doing this. Now the problem with this particular strategy is that you need to have men that would pull this at exactly the same time. If even one guy, one scrawny little guy, such as myself, decided to put this, uh, pull this differently, it, the actual projectile would not fly as far. It would actually not be as effective and unfortunately the entire uh, trebuchet would actually not be as powerful. So around uh, 12th century, specifically early 12th century, uh, or I guess, oh, oh no, oh no, barbarian, barbarian. All right, no more barbarians, so let's just continue evolving our trebuchet. So around um, the time of um, Byzantine, which was the Eastern Roman Empire, one of the emperors actually looked at this device from, from Asia, from China, and decided to improve it. And he actually decided to, instead of using people, he figured, hey, listen, why don't we just use gravity? Gravity doesn't change, gravity is constant, so what if we just put a whole bunch of weights on this side right here? And so what he did, he basically attached a bunch of really, really heavy weights on this shorter side, and um, which created this type of a uh, counterweight. So this is actually called a counterweight trebuchet. And this is the what we would call a stereotypical trebuchet today because this is the trebuchet that was known to have been used very extensively throughout the Middle Ages. And here we go. So this is a counterweight and as you can see it actually moves just really, really nicely. But I don't think this is actually enough. So I'm going to add some more weight just to make this a little bit heavier because this had to be really, really heavy. It's on the shorter end of the stick, and this is the longer end of the stick, so uh, this needs a lot of power, and this is actually where you have this whole physical idea of kinetic and potential energy being transferred. So we're gonna add quite a lot of weight on this side. Anyway, so this looks pretty decent. So anyway, so the, yes, this uh, Byzantine emperor, I believe his name was Alexios, and uh, he, somewhere around 1100, the year 1100, uh, invent, reinvented this type of trebuchet. So he's decided to use gravity instead of people. And um, he basically used this during one of the sieges. He actually realized that, listen, if we just use a counterweight instead of people, it's going to be a little bit more accurate and also a little bit more powerful and possibly even more efficient. And he was totally right because not only was it um, always sort of on the point, uh, you know, if you have people pulling this, you'll always have different results. But if you have gravity pulling it, it's actually very accurate in terms of uh, uh, throwing projectiles in the almost exact position where you want it to go. And so during the Crusades, they've used these types of machines and they started using them very extensively. They actually spread uh, very, uh, very fast across the um, Europe and across the, um, the Middle East. And so both the Crusaders and the, um, uh, the warriors of Saladin, which was basically the, uh, the Muslim commander that was opposing the Crusaders, were using these types of devices extensively throughout the Middle Ages. And after this, for about 300 years, these devices were used. So anyway, let's uh, before I continue, let's actually start attaching um, a machine that will actually pull this back into its original position. And at the same time, we need to actually start attaching our projectile. So I'm going to put one of these things right here. All right, so now we need a winding mechanism for this trebuchet because we need to pull the longer end down here so that we can actually attach um, a projectile to it. So let's actually make one of the winding mechanisms by using a really simple, really simple beam right here. I'm going to attach a lock catch block to it, which is basically to prevent it from moving unless we tell it to move. And we're also going to put another rotation beam right here in such a fashion. And then also, also a rope rope drum which we need to put right right on top of that all right so this looks pretty good this looks quite aligned as well so let's actually attach a rope 
to this. And now we can actually wind it using... Oh, I forgot to attach a wheel. We need a turn wheel right here. So, all right. So now we can actually turn it. And this will wind up our trebuchet and get it ready for firing. All right. So it's a little bit wobbly. Mostly because of the, all of this extra weight there. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm actually going to place... I'm going to place one of these things on the ground just so that it actually holds things in place. Okay, that's better. So we, uh, we're just going to keep it in this way just so that it actually doesn't, uh, doesn't break itself by accident. Now, we need to put a projectile somewhere over here, and this is basically it in a nutshell. So um, I'm not sure if this is going to be enough weight. This actually doesn't look like it's enough weight, but you'll see what, uh, what this trebuchet does in a nutshell in a second when I put a, proje a tiny projectile. Can we actually attach a rope to this? No, we can't. This is not a ropeable object. This one is, though. Now, in general, trebuchets were able to pro uh, to throw projectiles of, um, on average, about 100 to 150 kilograms. But there were some really giant ones that could actually throw um, up to 500 kilograms of weight. Okay, I need, I'm having trouble placing this. I may need to actually put a beam here. All right, so this is just so that it doesn't roll away, and hopefully this works. Ah, uh, come on, really? Really? Really rocks? All right, that's that's good enough. That is good enough. I will live with that. So now um, we're gonna use this new item that was added in the very recent version of the game, and specifically, I'm talking about this item right here, terrible rope. So we're gonna take a terrible rope and now place it or attach it to this and also this. There you go. So terrible rope will allow us to now use a projectile. And in the trebuchet, so basically when it gets to the top, it should be um, able to kind of tear itself and then the projectile will be launched, as long as this is enough weight. And I actually don't think it, it is enough weight, so I'm gonna add a little bit more to it. Alright, so this looks a little bit heavier and it looks like a very typical trebuchet that was originally used in 11th, uh, 1100s and 1200s. So basically, there was a weight right here and there was a long uh, beam and a weight uh, sorry, no wait, but a projectile attached at the end. So let's see how this flies, if it flies at all. And here goes nothing, and kabooch. Uh, all right, yeah. It fell right here. Uh, well, it's a start, it's a start. Um, mostly because this was a heavy rock, and this was just not heavy enough in terms of weight. So I need to add a lot more weights to it for it to fly farther. But this is basically the idea here, that um, you have a weight on the bottom, and then a, pro a projectile is flung in such a way that by the time it reaches top, it um, the rope separates, and then it's flung toward the castle. All right, so uh, I'm going to add some more weight, and let me just tell you how this actually evolved later on. So in about 200 years, by 1400s, what they actually did is they placed this thing, basically a rotationary beam, right here as well. Actually, right here, this was replaced with a rotationary beam so that this whole weight was able to move as well. And as it moved, it created uh, two effects. One was it created more stability, so um, the actual trebuchet didn't break as much. And the other thing it did it was it actually created um, an extra kind of a power. So uh, the actual projectile flew farther as well. Uh, but this was a version 2.0 2 in a sense of a trebuchet, which was in, reinvented or reinvented about two, three hundred years after the first trebuchet was used. But interestingly, this only lasted for about a hundred years because in the late 1400s, um, cannons replaced trebuchets, so actually cannons were the next stage of siege warfare, and this is where trebuchets became obsolete. And so basically about 300 years after they were invented, during the Middle Ages, um, they also disappeared completely. The last time they were actually used in, in warfare, except for Europe and um, some of the uh, sieges in France, uh, they were, basically, they were used with cannons at first, but then they actually became more um, more obsolete because, well, you needed a lot of wood to build them. Actually, so much wood that uh, people used to capture trebuchets and build entire camps out of them because it was just way too much wood used. Um, so it was quite a waste of material. But anyway, so yeah, the last time they were used were, was in... Oh, hey, how are you? Go away. Oh, that was... That's, that must have been painful. Surprised he didn't break anything. Um, 
they were used in uh, North America, actually. And can you guess where? Well, yes, they were used in Mexico during the uh, Aztec takeover, uh, Spanish takeover of Aztec Empire. And specifically, this was actually, I believe, in 1500s, maybe 1520s? 1521, I think. And it was uh, uh, Herman Cortes, the infamous con conqueror, conquistador. He basically um, did not have enough gunpowder or cannons. And so during the siege of, uh, I believe the place was called Tenochtitlan, which is uh, somewhere somewhere in South America, not Central America, sorry, somewhere in Mexico. Um, and the, it was a city, an Aztec city that he was trying to um, take over. And because he didn't have, have enough gunpowder, he decided to build a bunch of trebuchets. And this was actually the last known usage of trebuchets in warfare. And uh, actually, no, that, that's not true. It's not the last one, but it was the last um, semi-successful use of trebuchets because, um, well, he built a few and the first one accidentally destroyed itself, but a few other ones were able to flung a few projectiles and did hit a few things. So um, he did take over the city, even though even though it's actually not known if they were responsible for the actual takeover. I'm sure he actually scared the Aztecs, and so he, they probably just gave up after that because they realized that he has some power that they don't. Uh, now, historically, the last, last, last use of trebuchets, at least uh, this is what, according to historical books, was during the English-Spanish War um, of 18th century when England was actually um, in Spain and they decided to take over Gibraltar and so ever since Gibraltar actually did belong to, belong to England and um, they, uh, they built a bunch of trebuchets in Gibraltar during the siege of Gibraltar but nobody knows if they actually used them it's just known that they were built but nobody knows if they were actually used uh, and this was during the gunpowder age too so they did have cannons, they did have other types of um, war machines but Trebuchets were powerful enough to actually instill fear into enemies, so they were built by the the British troops and, you know, we know what will happen afterwards. The Gibraltar became part of England. Okay, so I've just basically attached about a double amount of weight from what it was before and hopefully this will actually work. I don't know if it will, but it might. Uh, I think the rock I'm using is actually a little bit too heavy for this type of a machine, but We'll see if it works. So let's do this again. Let's uh, wind this up using our winding machine and then reattach it and launch a projectile yet once again. And this will be the rock that we are going to try to launch yet again. So a terrible rope and let's hope this time it flies a little bit farther. Here we go. And no, <laughs> no, it did not, did not fly farther at all. So yeah, but the idea here is, I believe is quite simple. And I hopefully this is clear for you what you need to do if you want to try this yourself. Basically put a really, really, really super heavy weight on the short end and then put a detachable rope on this end and attach a rock to it. If it all goes right, uh, it should swing really fast and launch the projectile toward the castle. Now, one of these days I'll be able to succeed in it, but today is not that day. But basically, that's it. That's the trebuchet in a nutshell, and this is how you would build one in medieval engineers. Hopefully, this was clear, and hopefully, you learned a little bit about the history of this awesome siege war device. And I apologize for killing so many barbarians because they were kind of destroying my stuff, so I had to take measures into my own hands. And this castle, oh, I think I actually damaged it a lot as well. Well, let's finish by throwing a few rocks here just so that we can actually leave nothing to the barbarians and basically pretend that, like we actually did this with a trebuchet. This is what would happen if you actually did did hit um, the castle with, with the trebuchet. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please subscribe and game you later, alligators. Bye bye. Oh no, I'm falling, falling, falling. Oh, oh, my castle. Who damaged my castle? Oh no, there's a trebuchet war machine in there. Whose machine is that? I'm gonna go destroy it. Her, her, her.